Monday, it's one day where people get to work and they are so excited because they love what they do. Good morning and welcome to another wonderful edition of At Numbered. We're wishing you life on the red from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nigeria. My name is Ramsey and of course, we are here to bring you to speed with the headlines for today. And joining me on today's uh, At Numbered, we have... Um, I, I'm looking for the words to use because um, this weekend came with something. Uh, I don't. I would tell you. Don't ask me what it actually came with. The way she's looking, maybe people will start suspecting because of the way you were looking. No, I'm actually, I'm actually eager. I'm curious. <laughs> you are curious. Yes, to know so how what was actually your weekend? happened how over was the weekend? weekend for you. How was your weekend? My weekend was fine. My weekend was good. I'm excited. You know, why were you quick to say for me? Did, was I referring to myself? Uh, in this case, I think you're actually referring to yourself. Are you sure? <laughs> Should I say something? <laughs> <laughs> the smiles, the smiles say. is passing message to our, yeah, our to viewers. Say. You know, today's smile. Children's Day. So I'm so oh, super excited. In every woman there is a child. <laughs> in every woman there is a child. In every, in every woman, woman there is a child. child. You feeling like a in baby today? Yes, I'm feeling like a baby girl. Good morning. Oh, baby girl. <laughs> yes. Good morning, uh, Michael. Good morning, sir. Are you feeling like a baby boy? Ah, happy Children's Day. Yeah, happy I Children's like Day too. I feel like All a man. the children. You feel like a man. Like a man. <laughs> in every man there is a boy. So yeah. there's nothing bad if you feel like a, the big boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right bringing you to speed with the headlines that we have for this day this beautiful monday morning i, I want to begin with the punch newspaper and i have this headline which says akano emirates tozo by all supporters protest as sanusi meet district heads uh kanu Emirates, the, the wahala in kanu state kanu emirate tozo by all supporters protest as Sanusi meets district head, federal government sue against uh, Tennessee's governors over local government funds. Details read on page 7. Then uh, the big story says Coastal Highway will boost uh, 30 million businesses. Tenobu is the one saying this. Remember, his one year in office is just two days from today. And he was so excited. As at uh, yesterday, he said he is proud, he is happy because... This is like a dream coming true for him. Then we have a two riders to that story. President says a project will foster trade, tourism, six counter funding. The second rider says that Tinubu insists land owners will get compensation. 700 kilometer highway, a symbol of unity. All right. And, uh, and that is uh, from the Punch newspaper this morning and so many other headlines uh, say coming from the Punch newspaper. I have uh, this one which is actually going to be my last today because of our time. All right, uh, it says, uh, well, I think there is some form of celebration going on everywhere. Is it because of the Children's Day? All right, away from the celebration, I'll stretch over brutal murder of all your private varsity students. Outrage over brutal murder of all your private varsity students. Details read on page four of the Punch newspaper. That's going to be the size of the headlines from the Punch newspaper this morning. Over to Antonia for the next paper. All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. The big story we have here firms, Jenkos, and fresh crisis over eligible customer policy review. That's on page six. Moving away from that, council autonomy. That's the kicker of the next headline. Supreme Court fixes May 30th to hear federal government suits against state governors. That's on page three. Emirates Tosso protest rocks Kanu as government considers curfew to curtail violence. That's on news page six. Tinubu promises compensation on coastal highway that you can find on page three. And then for the picture story on the Guardian newspaper, we'll have a welcome message from the FCT minister to his uh, excellency, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and uh, talking about the flag off of the commencement of uh, the commercial operation of the Abuja Rail uh, trans, uh, Transports transit i beg your pardon transit system and scheduled for may 28th to june 6 2024 that's beginning from tomorrow yeah beginning from tomorrow that's good let's let's go yeah. use it and yeah, see that's, how it's that's gonna be beautiful impressive and all of this is in commemoration of president Sinobo one year in office. in office and this is actually quite impressive Mwike coming in on board and having so many projects that he has done and they're also going to be commissioned alongside they're also uh, 
light rail light rail they're also giving abuja a good look yeah. you can see the roads are being, being painted, painted. Yeah. you a lot of things happening well i think um Nigerians need just more than this um, aesthetics. Yeah, yeah, we need more than this aesthetics, but it's actually pleasing to see. It's pleasing. You know, for this is what we've not had for, yeah, a, a, for very a long, long time. time. When I was uh, I was in a vehicle one day and I and I saw that the roads were the sides were being painted and I was like, ah, so this was this this thing actually had a color. Yeah. <laughs> so what's this? Like a white. So you, what's for, this? you forgot because, because I, we had already right gotten right. used to how it was. How it was it just looking at it. So it but it's, it's all good. But it's all that, good. I think we is not doing badly so far. Mm -hmm. It has to do with um, some little, little infrastructures. Yes, yeah, some little, little infrastructure. Because we, we expect well, more. Yeah. yeah. More. Not just the painting. <laughs> all right, Michael, what headlines do we have from your end? All right, thank you, Antonia. Straight to the Daily Trust. We have three headlines here. Tinubu's policy is necessary but wrongly implemented. Mm. That's from the former president of Basenjo. Tinubu's policy is necessary but wrongly implemented. You can read that details on page six of the Daily Trust. The next headline: Three killed, seven injured as mosque collapses in Lagos. Oh, that's a that's sad really one. Sad. That's a sad one. You can read that details on page three of the Daily Trust. We cannot educate our children by leaving them begging. That's on the Sultan in page fourteen of the Daily Trust. A way to the big story: Emirate Tozo protesters hate Kano streets, demand Bayero's return. Uh, we have four liners to that story. Commissioners, local government chairs on solidarity visit to San Nusi. They're already celebrating San Nusi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, well, I think um, what is happening in Kano State, uh, yeah. for me, uh, I don't know. I think, um, b uh, permit me to say this, that it's becoming political. Mm. Uh, before now, the seat of the Emir is held at a very high esteem. But I don't know what's happening. Kano State... Kaduna. In fact, when the Emir speaks, the governor keeps quiet. Sometimes, I think I could remember back then in Kano State, before the governor is even being installed into office, they go to see the Emirs first, mm. seek the Emirs' consent. But now, reverse is the case. You know, governors installing uh, Emirs. Emirs. I don't know what's happening. This game of the throne. And uh, of course, it's looking like a battle. The case in court, uh, Sanusi in, in one court, uh, Bayro in oh, another yeah. court, and the faction now. And people are saying the federal government should just hold their peace and not waging. And some persons are saying, well, maybe the ruling party in a way is trying to destabilize activities in, in Kano, Kano State because Kano State is actually an NNPP state. And maybe it's another way to capture the state. According to what people are saying, we, we don't have, uh, we don't know if, if that is true, but that's what some school of thought uh, uh, is saying. But then whatever happens, I think um, Kano should be put together. The protest shouldn't continue. And um, whoever the people want to be their emir, should be installed as mm. their emir and not necessarily who the government wants. Let's depose. Talking about destabilization in Kano, you the spirit. The next story card is that don't destabilize Kano opposition lawmakers tells federal government. So okay. you are in the spirit. The next the next line, I've accepted my fate, the throne emir of Gaia has said, mm. we've uncovered plots to attack state assembly and all that. That's from the police. I, I trust Kano. They, they can <laughs> do it. <laughs> you can read this details on page 3 of the Daily Trust. Away from that, police confirm 11 killed in Casina bandits attack. Mm. You can get that gist on page 5 of the Guardian. Tinubu comments Dan Gotti on Lagos Road Project. That's on page 38 of the Daily Trust. Two abducted Kogi Varsity students killed. That's very sad. That's, that's, that's very sad. sad. Yeah. Yes. You can read that on page 14 of the Guardian. Now, down, down, we have another story that's very interesting. Federal government sues 39 governors seek full autonomy for local government. Federal government sues 36 governors seek full autonomy for local governments. We we'll have to realize with that story. Ask Supreme Court to halt transfer of local government funds to states. Ask Supreme Court to halt transfer of local government funds to states. Once end to a point of Unelected council chairs, governors, governors forum silent. That you can get that story fully on page five of the Daily Trust. Away from that, um, back to you, Mr. Ramsey. I thank you very much, Michael, for those headlines. Let's quickly take you to the Nigerian Tribune, which is going to be the last headline for today. The kicker says Sanusi above the header. Sanusi is the kicker. Then the story says hunters mount surveillance 
at Emias Palace. And uh, we just won't write it to that story. Northern traditional uh, rulers call for restraint. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, then this one said, Bayero supporters protest. All right. I don't know. Uh, but then it's still in Kano. Details read on page four. You can just pick it up and just go through it and see what is happening there for Northern traditional rulers calling for restraint. It means something needs to be done because traditional rulers they know what the throne is all about more than the politicians mm. okay because they are the traditional rulers and i know this is traditional rulers council when they, they have their council they know how these things work moving away from there lagos calabar coastal highway will revolutionize transportation boost tourism this is coming from the president tenobo and uh, details read on page 10 and the big story from here uh oh very big of course mm -hmm. federal government takes governors to supreme court seeks autonomy for local governments this has been in the pipeline just one ride to that story alleges misconduct in local government affairs details read on page 23 uh okay and that's going to be the size of the headlines from here this morning uh, if you are interested in any of these stories just want, go straight to the vendor and pick nigerian tribune so that you can peruse through it for more stories let's go on a quick break when we return we'll talk about the federal government taking uh local government uh not local government per se governors state governors mm -hmm. okay and probably if the state governors need to face any uh case in the court it will also affect the local government chairman too so let's see what happens when we return from the break follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke tv visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey Ubeleke tv rising star at the fairground You're still watching Outnumbered on Oweleke TV on this beautiful Monday morning. It is the time when we bring, to you, bring you to speed with the big story for today, which is about the federal government taking governors to Supreme Court seeking autonomy for local governments. The federal government have said it uh, not now, a long time ago, that they want the local government to have their own autonomy so that at least allocations can go straight to them so that the people at the grassroots can be directly affected positively. But then the issue of Godfatherism again, uh, maybe is what is trying to play out, but the federal government said they cannot keep quiet over this. But then you begin to ask questions. The federal government and the governors, who is stronger, who is a local government uh, a chairman and uh, who is a state governor and who is the federal government as far as power is concerned. But I feel uh, any instruction coming from the federal government, the state governors should adhere to it. But now reverse is the case. And the federal government is trying to follow due process by taking 36 state governors to Supreme Court. All right over the autonomy of local government do you feel um the federal government has taken the right step or um what they would have done is just okay whether you like it or not allocations we will send directly to the local government chairman then you begin to ask questions who puts the local government chairman there what do you think about this whole drama i said something i said well every day you come up here what you see is drama one drama mm. to the other so what do you think about this whole action? Okay, I think it's actually a good one from the federal government suing the governors because uh, if you look at in ordinarily, the federal, states and local governments ought to work hand in hand, so to say. The federal is at the top, state government, local governments are local government chairmen are at the grassroots level. So more like reporting back to the states, the states reports back to the federal government. Now, in this situation, we've seen local governments where their chairmen are just like ceremonial heads. Mm -hmm. They are just there occupying the position. They are being used as tools by governors to accomplish whatever interest they have at heart. So rather than take uh, the pains of the people, rather than work on what the people at the grassroots level want, they don't, uh, they don't do that. 
They just focus solely on the desires of the state governors. And we have some other state governors who funds that have been disbursed for local government development do not get to the grassroots. Because if they do, we'll be seeing it in the different towns and villages we enter. There are some places in Nigeria that mm. don't have good roads. Even as we complain in the cities that there are no good roads, in some places in, the, in, the, uh, in Nigeria that are unmotorable, there are some places that don't have electricity. Even with our band A to E in the cities that we complain, there are some places that don't have electricity. Mm. There are some other places that they don't have portable drinking water. Mm. There are some others that they don't have the schools in that environment. It's nothing to write home about. No chairs. They don't have enough teachers. All of these things are things that ought to be put in place. But when you have local government chairmen that... Uh, are more like ceremonial heads. And that is the reason the federal government is coming out to say, let them have autonomy. Because once they have autonomy over the different local government areas, you see things to begin. It will even make work a lot easier for the governor. Mm -hmm. Because a governor of the state will be at the state's uh, house in the state. So if something happens in any local government area, it's easy for you to put a call across. That's the, the, the local government chairman ought to be your eye in whatever local, whatever part of the mm -hmm. state. Yeah. But when you are not there, it's more like the governor now has to go around every local government and that's just a lot of work. It's a lot of, it's a lot, honestly. Okay, it's a lot of work. All right, uh, Michael, yes, um, are you, do you belong to the same school of thought or you have something different in your mind? Federal oh. government swing? Yes. Governors, 36 states, governors of very, the 36 very states. Very development. Okay. Very welcome. Why I say that? Because the Attorney General Latif Hamimi was very specific when he said he wants the credit that comes straight from the federal government account going straight to the local government, not governors constituting caretaker committees. I mean, which 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 developed country do you see constituting caretaker committees? It has to be the ones that are democratically elected and guaranteed that the people know, according to the, the 1999 constitution, if a federal government is supposed to be sending an allocation that belongs to local government straight away, how would they have to go through caretaker committees? What are the governors trying to tell us? Are there some skeletons in that queue? But that's, that's what it means. Because for me, um, for him to say we want an injunction preventing governors, you know, from these caretaker committees that they've created and all that, I believe is a very welcome development. Let the funds go direct from the government account, federation account, straight to local government because implementations of the things of the grassroots is from the local government chairman so why will it go through the caretaker committees and the president commander in chief emphasis does not know caretaker committees there was no constitutionally um, this in elected caretaker committees it's the governors that are putting their own people ask and call that's them, exactly what i wanted and to say call, call them caretaker, caretaker, committee. Committee. Are caretaker? why caretaker why caretaker are when, when there are people who can be who are democratically, democratically elected, elected into this office they should be voted for but we, normally we have local government elections yes we do. yes we do we are, even to the council to yes. the councillors. yes so okay. why, will you, why will you just come so, up to say uh caretaker committee that's the only way they put in people who they can control mm -hmm. and um I, I don't know i think um, it's high time and to tell this you is how bad it is, it is it's been endemic i mean there is a state everyone has caretaker committee every governor wants to that's all more, the states in more, you know so you see local government uh, chairman trying to cry to the federal government they may not have assets so uh, uh, mr president what you send through federation account is not even getting to me, so I can't do nothing in the grassroots. You find out that the deplorable state of the grassroots, it's 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 unbecoming. It's been perpetual. It's been endemic. It's been there, and the governors just say, you know, caretaker committees come out. You know, you have to pay homage to me. I'm the one that put you there, not the local government. So most local government that's the godfatherism. Yeah, pay out. most local government chairmen are just ceremonious and they inactive and passive. They just a local government chairman, and they'll be taking the stipends. From the governor and it has to stop and this is the time for you to stop so kudos to latif family for this um injunction all right um well i think um this is a good one uh the agf the federal government everyone who is uh on this course i think they should fight it to the end let's see what will happen what will come out of the supreme court and of course local government chairman if you are being elected into the office make sure you affect the people at the grassroots and refuse to be used because some of them may want to come back where the problem is is that um 
uh, this party thing. Well, it is our party. We need to move from the local government to uh, the state national assembly or maybe to vie for other positions in the state. And by that, they begin to work as um, tools in the hands of governors so that they can pave their way. I think all of that would have to stop. Whoever that is democratically elected should be the one that is there. And if you are there, you should also know that you are there for the people and not just for yourself. Well, this is going to be the size of uh, the big story on our number on this beautiful Monday morning. And we are so excited to come on your way. And it's so good that Antonia and Michael have added their voice to the conversation. And the analysis is so, so up to date and it's so key. Let me use that word, key. Awesome. So it can unlock any padlock. This analysis has <laughs> a matter of fact. <laughs> All right, I will come on your way again. And that's going to be tomorrow morning, same time, same station. My name is Ramsey and I'll have a beautiful day and make sure you put a smile on someone's face today. Bye-bye for now.